All right, let's build upon some of the concepts we've learned in this course already and write a Python program outside of the shell and deploy it. So you'll see here on your screen that I've got a Python program that I wrote and is included with the source code as part of this course. Let's go over this code and then deploy it to our cluster. So you'll see some import statements here because in a Python driver program, not through the shell, we need to obtain the Spark context, and this example is also going to use the SQL context. We need to specifically import these. They won't just be available for us. So we're going to import Spark and SQL context. And then let's take a look at our main method here. What we're going to do is pass in a file name. The name of this file is uberstats, obviously. And we're going to just verify that a file name has been passed in. If it hasn't, we'll exit. If there is a file name argument, then we'll move on to the program and we'll obtain a Spark context. We'll give this application a name, and we'll see this later on in the Spark UI. It can be anything. We'll just call it uberstats. Next, we're going to get a SQL context, so we'll call up into this function here, and we'll set the SQL context as a global. From there, we'll pass in some of the CSV-specific arguments that we've already seen in this course. So we'll pass in the, the format from our Spark CSV Spark package that we'll download, We'll set some options like the header is going to be true. We went over this already. The header true is that the first row in the CSV has the column names, and we're going to infer the schema from it. We're not going to explicitly tell Spark which each column type is. And then we'll, pat, we'll use that um, argument to load it in. Next, we'll call some of the Spark SQL code that we've seen, like registering a temp table and then running a query on it. So with this Spark program, let's deploy it. And deploying it also builds upon the previous examples in that we've got to include some additional arguments when we call Spark Submit. Let's get over to a terminal. So what we're going to do here is we're going to call, we're going to set the master again, but we're going to also pass in the packages argument here. Sorry about that. My screen, screen just went up. We'll pass in the packages for the CSV package. We'll call the name of the Python program here. And then we're going to pass in a file name. So we're going to check that the Spark CSV package has already been downloaded. This should just take a few seconds. And we can see our program is run. So great, we've now learned how to deploy our own program. And again, this code is part of the source code that's available with this class. Um, so next, we've deployed a bunch of programs to our cluster. Let's see what the Spark UI looks like now.